Welcome to Electron Line. So now let's find the center of gravity for the triangle. So the triangle has height h, the base of the length is base b. Of course we have half base b here and half base b there. And we're trying to find the center of gravity here. Of course the x coordinate, that's easy, that's going to be zero. But what about the y coordinate? Again, we're going to need a little slice right here. So here's a small little slice, that's my small little dA. My dA is equal to the height, which would be y, times the width, which would be a dx. So when we find the y coordinate, we can say the y coordinate is equal to the integral of the y coordinate, the small little segment, which is right halfway between zero and the height y, so it would be y over two. So we can say that the coordinate, the y coordinate of the center of gravity, that small little piece, is equal to y divided by two. So that goes in here y divided by 2, and there we have a dA, dA, which is y times dx, and the whole thing divided by the area of the triangle. Since, because we have a symmetry here, I'm only going to take, whoop, drop my pen here, only going to take the area of the half a triangle right here, so that's half the base times the height, one half times the base, which is one half b times the height h, and so that would be the area of this little segment right here. And then the limits of integration is going to be from 0 to b over 2 if we integrate over x. So from 0 to b over 2. We see here that we have a 1 half in the numerator and 1 half in the denominator. So that cancels out. So we end up with the integral from 0 to b over 2 of y squared dx divided by, in the denominator, we have 1 half b times h. Now we have a y square on, in the integral and a dx, so we have to get rid of the y square, we have to convert that somehow to x, that means we need an equation for this line right here, so this is in the format of y equals mx plus b, this is equal to the slope is the rise over the run, in this case the drop over the run, so a drop of h and a run of b over 2, so it would be minus h divided by b over 2 times x plus b, which is the y-intercept, which is h. So the equation we have for that line right here would be y is equal to minus 2h over b plus h. Oh, I'm missing something. I'm missing an x. Can't forget the x. x plus not b, but h. There's the equation on the line. We're going to put y squared in the integral, which means we need to square this side. So y squared is equal to the square of the first, which is 4h squared over b squared x squared, times twice the product of these two, which would be minus 2h squared over b, plus the last term squared, which is h squared. So that's y squared is equal to that, and that goes into the integral sign. So we have y, the y coordinate of the center of gravity is equal to the integral from 0 to b over 2. Uh, oh yes, yes, I need a 4 here. It's twice the product of those two. Thank you. 4, 8 squared over b. There you go. Thank you. So this would be equal to y squared, which is 4, 8 squared over b squared times x squared, and I also forgot an x there, didn't I? Minus 4h squared x over b plus h squared, the whole thing, times dx, and then the whole integral divided by 1 half b times h. Quick, let's check this again. The first term squared, the last term squared, and twice the product of those two. So yes, I can't forget the x. So I'm now ready to integrate this, and to make sure we don't get too confused, let me draw a line around it, because this might get a little messy. Let's go ahead and integrate and see what we get. We get the y-coordinate of the center of gravity is equal to, when we integrate, we get 4h squared x cubed divided by 3, so it'd be 3b squared, minus, integrate the second term, we get 4h squared x squared divided by 2, that would be 2b, and that would be plus h squared times x. And the whole thing evaluated from 0 to b divided by 2, and I can't forget the denominator, 
which is one half b times h. Right away I can simplify some things. I have an h here, and so I can get rid of the h squared, the h squared, and the h squared in the numerator. Whenever we can simplify, we should do it, right? Now we're going to plug in the upper limit. When we plug in the lower limit, we get zero, so we don't have to worry about the lower limit, but we do need the upper limit. This is equal to 4h. Now x cubed, when I plug in a b over 2 for x cubed, I get b cubed over 8. So it would be b cubed divided by 8. I still have a 3b square in the denominator. Minus, when I plug in a b over 2 here, I get b squared over 4. So I get 4 times b squared over 4. I still have a times 2b in the denominator. And here I get an h plus h times b over 2. And the whole thing divided by... 1 half b. Notice that I have a b and a b squared that cancels out and a 4 and a 4. So I end up with a b divided by 2 and I forgot my h. Can't forget the h. So there would be an h in there. Notice I have a bh over 2 and a bh over 2 minus positive. So these cancel out. And over here I have a b cubed and a b squared. I have a 4 and an 8, that becomes 1 and a 2, so I end up with, I have a 1 half here, now since these are gone, I have a 1 half here, so the 1 half cancels out with this 1 half, and finally, I end up with, this is equal to an hb over 3, hb over 3, divided by, I still have my b in the denominator, but that cancels out over here, so finally I can say it's h divided by 3, and that would be the y-coordinate of the center of gravity of this triangle. Finally, for the result, we want to get their x and the y-coordinates of the center of gravity, and that would be equal to, for the x-coordinate, of course, that will be 0, and for the y-coordinate, we come back over here, and it is h divided by 3, and so that would be the center of gravity of a triangle.